at you. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully, it's a will. After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remains no more sacrifice for sin. You understand that? If, you know, the food is there, and then mommy says, come and eat. And for whatever reason may be, you are angry at her. And you are angry at yourself. And you say, I will not eat your food. And then you take that place of food and you throw it away. That's your free will. And you did that willfully. Now when you are hungry, you cannot say, mommy, can I have food? I'm out of the kitchen already. And the one I give you, you throw it away. You see, the same thing. It, de it delivers us from sin. It saves us from sin. And if we decide that that sacrifice, we're going to rubbish that sacrifice. If we decide we're not going to take the benefit of that sacrifice anymore, if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Look at the next uh, verse there, 27. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment. Now you are the one looking for the judgment. He doesn't want to judge you. He doesn't want to condemn you. He wants you happy. He wants you holy. He wants you moving forward. But you said, no, I'm grounded. You're grounded yourself. No, I'm going to continue seeing uh, that's your decision. And you are looking for judgment. He has not come to condemn. He has not come to judge. He has come to save. But you see, I'm looking for that judgment. All right, what you are looking for, you will get. Ask and thou shalt receive. Seek and ye shall find. Nor can it shall be opened unto you. But a certain fear for looking for of judgment and fairy indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Now, it's reserved for the adversaries. The Lord, in his own mind, he makes you an ambassador. He makes you a child of God. He makes you his offering. But you say, no, I abandon that. I want to fight. I want to fight. All right. But understand, when you make yourself an adversary of the Lord, that's your choice. That's judgment. There's fairy indignation, verse 28. In verse 28, he that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Verse 29, how of how much sorrow punishment. Suppose ye that he, he shall he be thought worthy who has trodden on the foot, the Son of God. You see that? That's not the will of God. That somebody who has been a believer is coming, and now something got into him, and he accepted that thing. Not Satan, because if it's Satan that does something through you, God will punish that Satan. And if it's not your fault, it's not my fault, it's Satan. God will handle Satan all alone, but because this it's man's choice. And he has trodden underfoot the Son of God. How do you tread somebody under your foot? He's standing before you. He's pleading, I died for you. He's pleading, I died so that your sins will be taken away. He said, get out of my side. I am your Savior. I am Jesus. I'm the Son of God. And you push him down and you walk over him. You have trampled underfoot the Son of God. Because you love your sin. And you love what you want to do more than the Son of God standing before you. Look at this. And he has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified. He was sanctified. He was saved. He was set apart. He was sanctified. He was made holy by the blood of the covenant. But now, he counts that blood. Look at that. Look at that. It says, wherewith he was uh, sanctified and 
an unholy thing. It counts that as an unholy. But you said the blood was holy before. Yes, I said so before. I don't say that again. I don't accept that again. That's the man he's choosing. That he's going to abandon the faith and abandon the grace of God. And I'm surprised the people who hear him say what he says and see him do what he does, they're still giving the respect of the old faithfulness. When he was standing, when he believed in Christ, when he was following Christ, they're still saying, brother, brother. They're still saying, reverend, reverend. And they're still saying, uh, pastor, pastor, look at what he has done. He's trodden under the Son of God, and he has uh, counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and he has done despite to the Spirit of grace. And you know, did he still use all this title? And he still say, you know, brother, he still say, sister. Look at him, look at her, and look at even his facial appearance, and look at his defiance against the Lord Jesus and against the Spirit of God. Look at verse 30. In verse 30, it says, For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. And we look at verse 31 there. Verse 31, it's a fearful thing to fall to the hands of the living God. Look at verse 38. In verse 38, it says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, you know, the free will is there. You become saved, your free will is still there. You're sanctified, your free will is still there. You become a minister, your free will is still there. And you become, you know, the highest of the ministers in your denomination, your free will is still there. And we need to subdue that free will. No, I will not do that. I'm a child of God, I will not go that direction. Make sure that your free will does not not ruin your life now. The just shall lay by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. It's when we stand on the ground of grace, and when we stand by the virtue of faith, he has pleasure in us. But it's not forever. If we draw back, then it says, My soul shall have no pleasure in him. Look at verse 39. Verse 39, it says, But we are not of them who draw back. I didn't hear you. Amen. It's a personal choice. Personal choice. When we know the path back, to the dregs of the world, to the defilement of the world, but we'll say, no, I am not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. You'll keep on believing. I believed yesterday, today I believe. I said today I believe. The water I drank yesterday is not enough to quench the thirst of today. The food I ate yesterday is not enough to assuage and temper and remove the hunger I feel today. The faith I had yesterday is not enough to overcome the challenges of today every day i must believe that's why it says we're not of them who draw back unto perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the soul amen in your life we come to point number two point number two the pattern and proclamation of faith in its fullness. We're looking at three things here. Number one, pleasing God through the obedience of faith. Number two, proclaiming the 
gospel for observance by the faithful. Number three, of, it says preventing the giants of the obstacles of fear. Look at number one. Number one is pleasing God through the obedience of faith. We're looking at um, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. The rapture is going to happen. Amen? But remember, remember, when he comes, the Son of Man, shall he find faith on the earth? Shall he find faith in your heart? Or is only activity, action? Or is only this, this, and that? But faith is missing. The rapture will take away the people that still have faith. By faith, Enoch was translated that they should not see death. Walk at that, on that, every day. There's so many things that will distract us from having faith. There's so many things that will jilt us. There's so many things that will test us. There's so many things that will try us. And then we forget the faith. We will say, you want to fight? Come on, I'll fight you. You want to do this? I'm ready for you. And then we abandon our faith. And you understand? To be translated and to have the rapture, we hold on to that faith. Any other thing that will come in our lives, or people who don't want to fight, or they want to do this and that, so that they make us drop our faith, and we now begin to walk in the flesh, in violence, all that will hit us from the rapture. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see dead, and he was not found because he had been translated. He had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Is the faith we have in him. I trust him. He cannot disappoint me. I trust him. He's holding my hand. I trust him. I'm in the right place. I trust him. I walk by his power. I trust him. All the promises he has made for me, they are yes and amen, and I'm living by them. It's that faith that gets us ready. Anytime the Lord will come, look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. Money does not please him. Self does not please him. The shouting does not please him. Speaking in tongues, good. But if that's all you do, you speak in tongues, you beat your wife. You speak in tongues, you steal church money. You speak in tongues and you do some lousy, lousy, feel the thing. All that does not please him. It is faith. The faith in him. The faith in the faithful. The faith in the finisher of her faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe. He cometh to God for salvation. He must believe. He cometh to God for healing. He must believe. He cometh to God for new strength every day to run the race. He must believe. He cometh to God for sanctification, holiness. He must believe. He cometh to God for power in the Holy Ghost. He must believe. He cometh to God for renewal every day. The strength of the Lord renewed in his life every day. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him that diligently seek him amen, amen. Uh, you know of our children I mean real real children those uh, infants and daddy says pray mommy says pray Pray every time, pray every day. Because it's in prayer we have our strength. And now your child is kneeling down and is shaking the head like this and turning like that. And he's uh, putting the hand and looking through the openings of the fingers. Whether mommy is watching or not, that's not diligence. 
I say that to say this. The people, adults, who say they are praying and they are seeking the Lord and they, they are doing this and then they open their eyes and see what that fellow is doing there and they are doing this and all and they are looking and that's why they are, you know, all and they march, they march, but they are looking and watching. That's not seeking the Lord diligently. If you went to the governor and you wanted something from him and you're doing like that, like a little child, like an infant, they'll not count you serious. The governor will say to, you know, the person, that, but why did you bring a man, a woman like this? He cannot even pay attention and he's not even looking at me. He's not concentrating on what he wants. Why don't you understand that if God is going to bless us, the prayer and the faith is that we believe that he, the almighty God, is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God's blessing will not multiply in your life. We're coming to number two. Number two is the pro a proclaiming the gospel for the observance by the faithful. We're proclaiming the gospel. We're doing what the Lord has called us to do and we expect that the faithful in the land, that they will obey the word of God. In Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 24, by faith, Moses, think about that. Moses couldn't have done everything he did except by faith. Moses here am I. I've seen the affliction of the children of Israel and I've come to deliver them. Get up and go to that same Egypt that you ran away from that will take faith to go back there. And go tell Pharaoh to appear before Pharaoh. Remember, he left when the daughter of Pharaoh had adopted him that he would be king because the lady couldn't be a king and he absconded. He ran away. I don't want that. I want to suffer affliction with the people of God. And he comes to that same place that takes faith. And go tell Pharaoh, let my son go. And Pharaoh said, Moses, Aaron, you keep the people from their work. You want them lazy. I want them to build for me. And you are saying that they should go. Don't come here again. And he came again. Where they drove you out and they say they don't want gospel here. They don't want preaching here. They don't want righteousness, salvation here. And the Lord said go back. And you go back. That is faith. And then eventually with all those miracles performed, they let you go. And now they were by the Red Sea. And look at Pharaoh and his chariots coming. And you are still standing there. And you are telling the children of Israel, fear not. The Egyptians you see today, you'll see them no more. That's faith. And when God said, why are you crying unto me? Stretch your rod. Rod, look at the sea. It will drown everyone. But it says, stretch your rod. And it stretch your rod. And the rod parted. Will you be God if he told you to do something like that? Unscientific. And just stretch the rod. He did by faith. And then they came over like you will come over. Yeah. No sea will drown you. Yeah. No sea will drown your ministry. It's all by faith. And God said, look back. And the Egyptians were coming. They were in the middle of the Red Sea. Say, stretch your rod again. Rod, that's all you have. What's in your hand, God will use to perform a miracle. He said, the rod and the water closed up on them. They sang. They came to the next chapter after their singing. At the end of that chapter 15, the water was bitter. They couldn't drink. And the children of Israel began to murmur. And Moses said, what am I going to do? Look at that tree. A representation of the cross of Christ when he comes. Throw it into that river. And Mara, bitter, will turn to sweet. 
The cross of Jesus will turn every bitterness of your life into sweetness in Jesus' name. And it was so, and it was so. And the Lord made a covenant for them. And he came to the next chapter. What are we going to eat? Now you made us leave Egypt. Where is breakfast? Where is lunch? And God said, you'll give manna all by faith. And they went, and the Amalekites came against them, chapter 17. And again, they overcame. Every chapter, every step of the way, it was by faith. Every day in your life, you'll overcome. Yeah. Every challenge that comes to you, you'll overcome. Yeah. By faith. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Verse 25, he says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You cannot enjoy the provisions of Calvary and enjoy the pleasures of sin at the same time. One has to go. If the purity of the cross is rejected, then you have your pleasures of sin. But if you're going to enjoy the provision of the cross and the provision of Calvary, the provision of Christ, you have to abandon the pleasures of sin. Look at verse 26. Verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of in Egypt. You understand what that means? It's like, um, you know, you've taken your bus, but you've not robbed the pomade and, you know, whatever, uh, to make you look uh, good, beautiful, and handsome. But insult comes because of your faith. Insult comes because of your preaching. And the insult comes because of your ministry. And you take that insult. And you rub it on yourself because you enjoy it. They insult me because of Christ. They, are, they reproach me because of Christ. I take that like pomade and I rub it like this and I rub it on my and I say, thank you, Jesus. I can suffer reproach with you. That's how Moses saw everything that came because he esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Verse 27, in verse 27, by faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured a seeing him. Tell me who is invisible. When he was in Egypt, he saw Pharaoh and he saw the fury. He didn't really see him or look at him. He saw the invisible God. He saw those magicians that are going to perform and replicate and reproduce the miracle that the Lord performed. He didn't look at the magicians. He looked at his God as seeing him who is invisible. And yet calls Pharaoh and he pointed his uh, dangerous finger at uh, Moses. And you could see on his face, don't come here again. He didn't see the man. He didn't see the anger. He saw the presence of the invisible. And the Amalekites that came and behind the army of the children of Israel, they were going to destroy everyone. He didn't see the Amalekites. He saw him who is invisible. You know our problem? We see people too much. We don't see God, the invisible one. Somebody is threatening us. We hear him more than we hear the God of heaven who says, I never leave you, I never forsake you. We saw a bully that will bully us down and shout us down. We didn't see God. We're looking at the bully and we're trembling and shaking. Our problem is we see dangerous people here on earth too often, too much. We gaze at them 
And as we gaze at them, it looks like their furious eyeballs are stronger and greater than the um, fav favorable eyes of the Lord. But the reason why the worthies of old had success is because every time they could endure a seeing him who is invisible, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Whatever you see of this world, look away and see the invisible. You will always have the victory in Jesus' name. We're coming to number three here. Number three is preventing the giants of the obstacles of faith. Preventing the giants. Yes, there were giants in the land. And there are still giants in the land. And the giants have just one goal. That the people of God will not get to their inheritance. And if we look at those giants, uh, never, never even pick up the courage to move on and get to our inheritance. They heard that Joshua was coming. And all those kings made a confederacy. And they said, let him come. Or oh, show him who have been kind of forceful, violent, fighting soldiers from our youth. And Joshua still went all by faith. They passed through the Red Sea by faith. They passed through Jordan all by faith. They passed through. And those Jericho walls came down all by faith. And these things were written for our learning. That if we just believe the Lord, there are no giants on earth that can hinder us in Jesus' name. Giants may brag, that's who they are. Giants may boast, that's who they are. They would say, give me one man there. If he's able to conquer me, then you conquer us. We will be your servant. If I conquer him, and that was actually his emphasis because he failed. Anyone they brought, he will conquer that individual. And they say, why are you watching? Are you not the followers of Saul? Here I'm the giant and I come. Give me one man. Okay, we'll give you one man. We'll even give you somebody who's not a full man yet, just a boy. We'll give you somebody who does not have the strength to carry any sword. We'll give you somebody who does not have an armor bearer. We'll give you somebody who does not have the experience of even uh, waging war and having the victory. And here comes David. What? Did you hear what I said? Give me one man. And you give this little boy, you want to waste his life, he became more angry. You know, these people who overcame in the Old Testament, they didn't fear the anger of anyone, the shouting of anyone, the sword of anyone, the spear of anyone, the armor bearer of anyone. We're too fearful of our neighbors. Were too fearful of even people were familiar with that man lives, you know, that side. And we even fear his driver more than we, you know, fear God. And uh, that, that woman, they said, if a woman has a beard and is growing a beard here, they said that just you, she said, you understand. <laughs> and once you look at a woman, and she has some air here. Ah, you are trembling. They will kill me. <laughs> Who can kill you? <laughs> when Satan, their master, cannot kill you, there are servants that have no power. How can they kill you? They come in the dream. And they have come. They have come. You understand? If somebody is bold, let him come during the day. Those who come in the dream, if they're not, they are cowards. <laughs> and they say, I will finish you. Tell them, when we wake up, you come. 
and I, when I mention the name of Jesus, you'll be nowhere to be found. It's the fear that we have of that man, of that woman. It's our own fear that kills us. Not their power, no. Not their ability, no. It's our own fear that paralyzes us. And any time, you can throw that fear away. It belongs to the devil. Send it back to the sender. And when you do that, you stand firm by faith. You prevent all those giants, the obstacles of fear, everything gone in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 29, it says, by faith they pass through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying and trying to do were drowned. Your enemies cannot copy you. I said your enemies cannot copy you. <laughs> look, look at Pharaoh. You know, great men can be foolish, thoughtless. Great armies can be foolish, thoughtless. They said, look at the sea opening. They had never seen any, anything like that before. Instead of uh, praising God and saying, we'll serve this God that can open the Red Sea for the children of Israel. They said, what Israel can do, Egypt can do. I hear you. And where Israel can walk, Egypt can walk there. I hear you. They're digging their own graves. And then they said, Pharaoh said, let's go. Be careful how you obey the commandment of somebody who wants to perish. He wants to perish and he says, let's go. Let's go. Me, I'm not going with Pharaoh. <laughs> I will stand where I stand. I will watch him get to the midst of that red sea. Are you not coming? Uh-uh. You go first. You will not follow them. And they tried to do that. They were drowned. I'm still alive. I am not drowned. You know why? I didn't follow Pharaoh into the Red Sea. Don't follow them. I said, don't follow them. Look at Vastachi. In Vastachi, it tells us by faith the walls of Jericho fell down. All those walls that try to prevent you from your inheritance, all the walls will fall down. Yeah. After they come past about seven days, look at verse 31. In verse 31, by faith, the harlot Rahab perished not. Give me a good amen. Yeah. As it was, so it is. Jesus said, the hallows, they go into the kingdom of God before the Pharisees. The hallows were the people that knew they were sinners. And they confessed, accepted they were sinners. The other people, the self-righteous people in the land, I'm better than that harlot. If anybody is to perish, she would perish, but I will not perish. It is not by self-righteousness, it is by faith. If a harlot comes and he says, I'm sorry for what I've done, I believe in the Lord Jesus now, she'll be saved. If a uh, profligate uh, comes and he says, my life has been wasted, but now I believe in Christ, immediately he'll be saved. What well, the people that are saying, I'm a good man, I'm a good woman, I've been going to church all my life, I pay the pastor's deal, I pay my, you know, tithes and offering, I'm not like these people, they don't believe on the Lord Jesus, they believe only in their so-called good works, they will perish. But you will not perish. By faith, the harlot Rahab perish not with them that Believe not when she had received the spies with peace. And look at verse 32. It says, And what shall I most say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson. Samson. 
What am I looking at? Something. Somebody help me. What do you see there? Uh, you know, there are people that talk, that person backslid, that person backslid, so was something. But then uh, the Spirit of God came back again. Faith came back again. And attachment to the Lord came back again. You know, the people that I don't backslide, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I'm always proper, I'm always like this. They don't have that power, but something came back. If you're backsliding today, you'll come back. Yeah. The same old power will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, something, something is left on. Uh huh. Tell me the story. And then he shaved his head. Tell me the story. And he lost all his power. Tell me the story. The New Testament said that all that something did, everything went of the sea. And it's uh, swept away. But now, by faith, something. By faith, yourself there. Whatever your past, faith will rewrite a new story about you. It is not what we were, it is what we are by faith today. And it is the faith that will wipe away the past, wipe away the guilt, wipe away the condemnation by faith. What will I most say? To so talk about Gideon, talk about Barak, talk about something, talk about Jephthah, or David also, and Samuel, and the prophets. The Lord is talking about them because of their faith. Heaven will talk about you because of your faith. Look at verse 33. In verse 33, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of pliers. Stopped the mouth of pliers. A lion is on the street. Go there. Stop his mouth. A lion is waiting for me on the evangelistic field. Go there and stop their mouth. A lion is waiting. I want to make progress. I want to run. I want to walk. I want to fly. I want to do the will of God. But a lion is waiting there. In the case of Daniel, not just one lion. Lions, lions, lions. And those lions were hungry. And they said, we're going to throw you in the lion's den. He said, go ahead. I want to prove God more. Prove God more. And then they threw him there. And, um, the, you know, the lions, they welcomed him. Uh, and he laid down like that. And he never had any kind of mattress like that to sleep on in his life. And he slept well. And the king came and the king said, Daniel, servant of the living God, is your God whom you serve able to deliver you? Daniel replied, he said, Lay forever, O king. Don't mind that. That's what they always say to them. They don't live forever, but you know, that's the normal thing they tell them. And that's what they wanted to hear. My God has sent his angel and he has shut the lion's mouth. Have the angels all died of? The angels are ministers to those of us who are heirs of salvation. Vision. And then the king said, Daniel, come forth. You will come forth. Yeah. And he came out. And some people say, you know, the secret, those lions were not hungry at that time. And because they are not hungry, and also they, you know, they, they, are, they are eating so much that they slept in the night. That's why they didn't, uh, you know, crush uh, Daniel. All right, all right. All those people that said the lions were not hungry, and that's why they didn't devour Daniel. Can you try your luck? <laughs> and then they threw them there. Lo and behold, when those people, when they arrived, at the lions said, meat has come, meat has come, meat has come. The unbeliever is meat for the lion. The righteous, your blood, it will be poison yeah. to those lions. And the lions knew that is poison. Don't eat that one. Let him go. Our food will come. Yeah. 
when you are there they will not eat you up yeah. after you are gone their food will come yeah. faith faith in the lord did who by faith brought righteousness and subdued kingdoms and obtained promises and stopped the mouth of lions now how did he stop their their mouth he didn't shout he didn't call heaven down. He didn't call fire down. He just quietly, you know, you can be quiet and have faith. Without saying anything, there's silent faith. There's shouting faith. When you're around the walls of Jericho, you can have shouting faith. When you are in the lion's den, as you breathe in faith, as you breathe out faithfulness, as you breathe in obedience, as you breathe, as you breathe out overcoming power, silently your faith will keep on walking in Jesus' name. You are in the office, you are somewhere, and you feel a sharp pain there. And it's not a place where you can shout, in Jesus' name, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Well, that place, that's not a place for shouting, silent faith. But your breath going in, your breath going out, that pain I command you, get out of there. And that silent faith will work. And no lion, no giant will ever eat you up in Jesus' name. Yeah. We're well, looking at point number three now. Point number three is our perseverance in possession of faith in the finisher. We're well, looking at three things here. Number one, number one is patiently running the race by the face of the sun. Number two is progressively reaching all regions as followers of the sun. And number three is perseveringly raising the righteous in the fullness of the sun. We're looking at number one. Number one, patiently running the race by the faith of the sun. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about by with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside. Let us lay aside look up here if you're traveling and uh, you are allowed a baggage and that baggage must wear this uh, kind of many kilos or pounds and as you are packing you try to they will accept as you are flying as you are going to your great destination then you see, I have to remove some things. You remove this, you remove that, and your weight again is still greater than they will allow to go with you in the flight. You remove enough, and then you lift it up now. This is good now. Now we're running a race, and we're going on a journey, and our load can be too heavy. Our load can be too overpowering. And when you see that at the beginning of the journey, I have to remove this, I have to remove that, make that load light enough so that you will be able to travel light. That's what you say, wherefore, seen. We also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every wage and the sin which so easily beset us and let us run where we run yeah. with, with the race that is set before us as you are you know running the race you understand you must not have any property of satan in your baggage it will make it too heavy and you'll not be able to run very well. What's the property of Satan there? Sin is. Sin. 
If there is anger, anger comes from the devil and it becomes too heavy and you cannot run at light. See, all those, uh, you know, terrible, terrible things that people do transgression. If you have them inside, you cannot. It is atrocity. All the atrocities of the world and the things that the worldly people do, if you put it there, it will be too witty, nothing is. If you put it there, while you are running, you, they, it will be so heavy, you cannot even carry, you cannot even walk, you cannot even stand with all those uh, things of Satan in the baggage. But you take them away, and now you will run. You will cross every sea. You will fly over every mountain. You will be springing in your heart. The joy of the Lord and the victory of the cross will belong to you. You will be an overcomer in Jesus' name. When you are driving a vehicle, make sure that all the parts are genuine. All the spare parts are genuine. Should in case the car is breaking down on the road. And then you bring the spare part and you fix it in. Make sure it is genuine. But the people that do not have the faith that comes from the author and from the finisher, from Christ. When they fix it in, it's fake. It does not work. Your faith or work. Yeah. And it says, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We're running a race. You are running a race. You will run well. And you run to the finishing line in Jesus' name. Whatever you have heard hinders others like you, those things will not hinder you. But every time, every day you wake up, you check your baggage, there's anything that will weigh you down, anything that will hinder your prayer, anything that will remove the wheel from your car of faith, anything that will ground you. Before you go out, remove all those things. Tell the Lord, confess it to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going uh, or I'm continuing my journey today. Remove this, remove this, and remove this and let me walk by faith all through my days in Jesus' name. Yeah. And every one of us will get to the finishing line. Yeah. You, where are you? I'll see you on the finishing line. Look at number two. Number two, we're looking at progressively reaching our regions as followers of the sun. Progressively, 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 you'll be making progress. Well, we'll hear stories about you. Good story. Good testimony. Where you were yesterday, you finished the work there, you are here on the new ground today in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 42. In Luke chapter 4, verse 42, and when it was day, he departed and went into the desert place and... The people sought him and came unto him and stayed him that he should not depart from them. Look at verse 43. In verse 43, and he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also other cities also for therefore am I sent the Lord has sent you it will be a successful ministry and then you go to other cities other cities other cities also if you've established ministry and church in this place after this day is the time to now move on progress Ground. 
and the grace that saw you through in this city when you get to the next city that same grace will see you through yeah. your life will not be limited yeah. my brother my sister your ministry will not be limited yeah. you've done it here go and do it in the next city you've done that go and do it in the next city you will not be tired yeah. You will not be weary. Like the Lord Jesus Christ, you follow him to the regions beyond. We're looking at uh, number three here. Number three is perseveringly raising the righteous to the fullness of the Son. Raising the righteous to the fullness of the son Ephesians chapter 4 in Ephesians chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 11 Ephesians chapter 4 looking at verse 11 and he gives some apostles and he gives some prophets and he gives some evangelists and he gives some pastors and teachers look at us here on the front row we come and we give the program he gave some we come to the side here a choir there and we give the program if they miss anybody out what do you do you raise up your hand i'm here are you there when you say i'm here oh, you've not got and give you your own and we come to this side the side of can choir and uh, you know we give we give if they miss you out what do you do you raise up your hand I am here, heaven will recognize you. And then at the back there, he gives some, he gives some. Now, he's giving everyone. Not everyone receives the same thing. He gives some apostles, receive. He gives some prophets, receive. He gives some evangelists, receive. He gives some pastors, receive. He gives some teachers, receive. When we receive, you know, sometimes those five, the fivefold ministry, maybe you've heard me before illustrate the thumb, that's the apostle, the pointing finger down at the man that is the prophet and the middle finger the one that goes beyond everyone that is the evangelist and this one where you put your wedding ring that's the pastor the preacher the minister of love and this one where you put which you put inside your ear whenever something is scratching you there that the teacher that puts the message inside your ear he gave some Apostle, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Now, you may not start at the top. When we started my little ministry, his ministry that he called me to, in 1973, he gave me a teacher. And then after of ministering in the teacher's office, he gave me pastoral. After that, I only did teaching and pastoring, teaching and pastoring. And when the pastoral ministry came, he didn't cancel the teaching ministry. And then he gave me the evangelist. And now I can go on the field. The teacher is still there. The prophet, uh, the, the pastor is still there. The evangelist has now come. And then, after the evangelist, I was even thinking, when you have three out of five, that's 60%. And that's good. That's past mark. And God says, I'm not through with you yet. He's not through with you yet. And then he gave me the prophetic ministry. And I say, there's somebody there, you have this problem, stand up. And then I pray, and the problem is solved. And now he gave me apostolic ministry. 
God has not finished with you. Say, he has not finished with me. Whatever he has given you, he wants to give something more today. Something greater today. Why? Look at verse 12. In verse 12, for the, uh, for the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, when God has given you the gift, when you see imperfection in your church, you will not criticize. You will not run away. How are you going to perfect their imperfection if you run away? When you see any imperfection, you are not to complain. You are not to blame people. You are not to criticize people. And you are not to beat people down. Say, ah, I know now why God sent me to that conference I know now why God gave me this gift is for the perfecting of the saints is for the work of the ministry till we all come till we all come say that with me it's not just me alone. It, they say what well, God has brought him until he comes. No, you and I. You and I. I said you and I. We all, until we all come in the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, will come there. Unto a perfect man will get there. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We'll get there. Yes. Every day, every little addition, every day, every little multiplication, every day, every little realization, every day, every little demonstration, we're moving on, we're moving on, we're moving on until I, until you, until we all come in the unity of the faith. Our faith is going to grow. And our faith is going to work. And then we come to a perfect man together. And it says unto the measure of the fullness of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I welcome you to a new level today. I welcome you to a new life today. I welcome you to a new possession today. We are coming higher. You are coming higher. Where are you? Get up and tell the Lord. Tell the Lord you are getting there. handed you lift your higher take your greater than the place you had ever been in your life don't mind what happened yesterday don't mind what happened today don't mind where you are now higher ground you are getting there. Anything in your baggage that's from the other side, sin, anger, transgression. Atrocities, naughtiness, anything that will weigh you down. Remove them, remove them, remove them. And continue in this journey of faith. 
You are going to run faster now. You are going to go higher now. The calling of God upon your life will be without repentance. name we pray he has answered your prayer everything you have asked him he has given you your life will take on new brightness new anointing new power where you failed before you will not fail again. Where you fell before, you will not fall again. Higher ground. Greater ground. The Lord confirm in your life, in your ministry, in your family, in your church, in your profession in Jesus' name. Place of that hand, the hand of a conqueror. The hand of brother Victor, sister Victoria. The Lord has lifted you up. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for everything we have learned. We pray you take every fear away from every life in Jesus' name. A new kind of faith new power of faith new progress through faith grant to everyone in jesus name the grace to build the grace to preach the grace to pray the grace to progress the grace for service sufficient grace Grant to everyone in Jesus' name the grace to remove every pebble, every stone, every hindrance, and every heavy weight. Grace to remove everything without any sluggishness. Give everyone in Jesus' name the grace to run. The grace to preach. The grace to sing. The grace to do more for your glory. Give everyone in Jesus' name. We as the people of God, we're crossing the Red Sea. Nobody here will be left behind. We as the people of God, we're conquering all the Amalekites. Yeah. Nobody here will be left behind. Yeah. We, the people of God, were crossing River Jordan. Yeah. You will not be left behind in Jesus' name. Yeah. We, as the people of God, were running around our Jericho walls. Yeah. All the Jericho walls before you will fall down for you. We are possessing the promised land. And the fruit of the land now belongs to you. Lord, give something definite. A call. An anointing. The power. The teacher. The pastor. The evangelist. The prophet, Amen. the apostle, Amen. give something that feeds the ministry you have called us to in Jesus' name. 
Your hands are no more empty. Your heart no more empty. The word of your mouth no more empty. Your ministry no more empty. Your bank of account, account of the bank of heaven in your life no more empty. Lord, give everyone sufficient to make progress in the ministry. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. Jam that hand together, jam it together. Let it be louder and higher. Great, marvelous, extraordinary, and all the gift the Lord has bestowed upon you during this period of ministers' conference, to know Friday, Monday, and today will be permanent. God bless you. Let's have a seat. We thank God for what he has done. And for all of us that are here, my prayer is that all that God has bestowed, invested in us, we will lose none. Before we round off, we're going to invite the current chairman of Enugu State to come and give a vote of thanks. Reverend Ambassador Emmanuel Ede, welcome. Is that the way you are welcoming the country, man? Jam your hand very well as we welcome the country, man. You are welcome, sir. God bless. I request that we be upstanding, please. Let us be on our feet. I'm praising on. That upward way, new height I'm getting every day. Still praying as I'm upward bound. Love plant my feet on high. Yeah. Ground, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven, stable land, I have played than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high ground. I want to say congratulations to you because it is really a time of divine impartation. Power for productivity. Power for excellence. Power for extraordinary miracles. We want to say to God be the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. On behalf of all of us, you know the Christian community in Enugu and Enugu State is a very large family. Thanking the Lord for all our state officers that are representing you. Thanking the Lord for all the directors of Khan. Thanking the Lord for all the block leaders of Khan representing the five blocks the CSN, the CCN, the CPFN, PFN, the OAIC, and the Tekan Equa Block, when we were approached, this program was supposed to be last year. I don't know whether some of you are aware. 
But the Lord knows the best time and season. Take the person by your side that this is the appointed time for you. Hallelujah. I've seen and observed and believe that God has never made any mistake. And he can never make mistake. So last year we were doing our best as human to see how we can package this program, but it didn't work out. But at appointed time, the Lord brought our Father in the Lord, a preacher of righteousness, a man that fears and honors God, live in Enugu. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me do something that will cause you to laugh a little bit. Do you know that many people in this city never believed that Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi is in Enugu life? I've told many people, I said, I was among the people that went to the Akanebiyama International Airport last week Wednesday to welcome him. I had a handshake with him. And he said, can't you, man, are you serious? Yesterday, when I, you know, came and the program was about to start, our father in the Lord invited me to where he was, I seated, and said, I missed you on Sunday. I said, that day, I wasn't in the morning, but I came in the evening because of other exigencies of duty. So we want to say to God be that glory. It is a blessing that nobody can forget in a hurry. If you ask me, I will suggest that this program be extended. Hallelujah. I will not forget to appreciate God for the choir. You know, there was a sentiment that was flying in town today. And I know how many people I answered their call. The first person I said, as I am responding to your corner, I am driving on the way. They said there's a seat at home. I said, it is not only for you to sit at home. You have to sleep at home. <laughs> sit and sleep. Go under your bed. I say, what nonsense. So we want to give thanks to the Lord for our choir, the one that ministered on Friday last week on the 25th, the one that ministered yesterday, and the one that ministered today. <laughs> Thank you so very much. We appreciate God. I equally want to appreciate the men of God that cut across church denominations. Join me, do your hand like this. God is breaking denominational barriers. And I want to say it by a way of assertion that God has broken all the walls of perdition and all the walls of denominational barriers, and so shall they remain broken in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> so we are saying that the Lord who remembered us and have poured the abundance of the blessings upon our lives, that we will never remain the same. <laughs> we are going to prosper. <laughs> like Oliver Twist. If you know me, you know that I will not end this vote of thanks without asking, when next is our father coming back to Enugu? <laughs> see, see how this man of God, this man of God is like saying that I'm demanding too much, you. Please, we are requesting, even the government of Enugu State, the people of Enugu State, all of us are requesting that our Father in the Lord should come back to Enugu soon, live. <laughs> so with Jesus' joy in our heart, we want to say, Oh Lord, we are grateful for these days and moments of blessings. And let me also, by way of information and reminder, tell you that just as we are rounding up this minister's conference this morning, do remember that another greater, greatest moment is still in the evening. So please, be there. We will be there. And the name of the Lord will be glorified and honored. We want to say thank you, Lord, for this moment. And may his name alone be glorified and honored. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Can't 
llama. Amen. What a wonderful vote of thanks. And I want to tell you, God will remember us again. Already great things has happened. As the country chairman has said, denominational barrier broken. Yeah. Amen. This evening, by what time? The day before five. And come with all the other people, like he said, some people are still doubting. Is GS life in Enugu? I want to ask you, answer. Is GS life in Enugu? <laughs> this evening will be the climax. If you have never seen miracle, you will see one in your life. Bring all our neighbors, your friends, your everybody around you, strangers on the street, compel them to come. Upper Square must not contain us. Everybody, Upper Square, be there and the Lord will bless you. Lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus, for this program. Thank you for what you have done. Just worship him. Just praise him, just honor him, just adore him, just praise his name. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us pray for our Father in the Lord, more strength, greater power, greater unction, greater anointing. Pray for him. What do you want God to use him to achieve? Pray. Commit him to God. Commit our mother in the Lord too. That God of mercy will pour more of his power, strength, grace, unction, anointing upon him. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. See you in the evening at Obara Square.
know for the weather. The Lord is merciful unto us. Even during the frost today, the rain couldn't stop the work of God. And since then, it has not disturbed us. Let's begin to thank the Lord for all these good things he is doing in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. A louder amen. amen. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use. I'm prepared unto every good work. I want you to pray that the Lord will take away every stain, every spot, every wrinkle, every blemish from your life so that you will qualify to be a vessel of honor in the hands of the Almighty God. That the Lord will use you mightily to liberate this present generation and the generations to come. Begin to Ask the Lord, purge yourself. Rain. And the priests, the children of Habiah, the children of Koz, the children of Basilai, which took one of the daughters of Basilai, the Giladite, to wife, and was called after their name. As you are praying, listen to this. These sought their register and wondered that they were reckoned by genealogy, but it was not found. Therefore, we are they as polluted, put from the priesthood. I want you to pray that no pollution will be found in your life, will be found in your home, so that you will not be put from the priesthood, disqualified from being a minister unto God. And the Tishata said unto them that they should not eat of the most holy things till they have stood up a priest with Urim and Tumim. Want to pray that on that day, the day that the saints will gather at the marriage supper of the Lamb, your name will not be missing in the book of life. You will be there. Anything that will remove your name from the book of life, like this one, their names were not found. They were disqualified. Anything that will qualify you from partaking in laws in, in the marriage supper of the Lamb, do away with that thing. That thing that has been making you not to partake of the Lord's Supper, deal with it now. It can disqualify you on that day. You will not be raptured. In Jesus' name we pray. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I want you to pray that the Lord will pour his spirit upon you this morning. Begin to talk to God. He will pour his spirit upon testy hearts, testy souls.
Today is the last day of this feast. Today is that great day that the Lord will not pass you by. Pray that the Lord will anoint you with the Holy Spirit and with power. In Jesus' name we pray. A bigger amen. amen. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. I want you to pray that before the end of this program, the Lord will turn you into another man. The Lord will turn you into another woman. I want you to talk to God right now. In Jesus' name we pray. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. I, wa I want us to pray that the Lord will give you another heart. For you to be turned into another man. For you to be turned into another woman. You need to be given another heart. Begin to tell the Lord to give you the heart of Christ. An obedient heart, a submissive heart, heart of flesh, humble heart, honest heart, holy heart, sanctified heart. Pray that the Lord will give you that heart. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an art, and the tongue of the dumb speak, sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. I want you to pray that God will take away dryness from you. Dryness from your ministry. You'll be laboring and laboring. You are not seeing the fruits of your labor. God is going to make a change today. You begin to see the labor. God has promised to increase us with men like flaws. Pray that the Lord will increase you. Everything that is causing hindrances in your life will be removed. Cast all the stumbling blocks, all the obstacles to your way of great breakthrough, remove them. In Jesus' name we pray. A little one shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in this time. I want us to pray that the Lord will fill this nation with people of righteousness. Fill your community with people of righteousness. Begin to talk to God. Thy people also shall be all righteous. The Lord can change the hearts of people the house of rulers, and made them righteous people. Now, as we are concluding, let's lift up the instrument, the vessel, the holy vessel in the hand of the Lord. Our own father, 
Pastor Do Do Dr. W.I. Kumuyi, that today the Lord will use him mightily. He will go from strength to strength. He will not be weary. He will not be tired. He will be sustained throughout this program and beyond. He will not break down. He will not lose his voice. Lastly, pray that all the promises of God will be fulfilled in your life. As you are leaving this place, you are going out as a revived person. You are going out with fire. You become a burning and shining light. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. You've gathered us, O oh God, to teach us the secrets of your kingdom.